Good evening, everyone. Uh, we'll wait for just a few moments to uh, allow everyone to log on who are in the process of doing that now. So just bear with me for just a few minutes and we will get underway. We'll wait just one more minute and then we will get started. Okay, I guess we will get started now. Uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this first uh, webinar or workshop in a series of ongoing uh, customer success department workshops from Eon Reality for users of the XR platform. Our goal is to provide a number of, of training opportunities and, and learning opportunities and exchanges to enable users to become uh, more effective and more excited about using the platform for all the capacity that it offers to you. Tonight's focus is going to be on a systems thinking approach for how to integrate XR into your teaching and learning curriculum. And to that end, we're going to make an assumption here at first that most of you are already using the XR platform. And tonight we want to just take a focus on, on deciding where and how to best find those fits for placing uh, XR into the curriculum in the teaching and learning process. Systems thinking or system thinking, systems works well for me because there are multiple systems that you can consider. Uh, and so tonight in our workshop, I'd like to look at some prerequisites for th systems thinking, parts of a technological system, higher level uh, systems thinking uh, for, for integration of XR, the integration process, some lower level strategies for XR, and a few examples and perhaps some questions at the end of our workshop. Uh, so I do have the uh, the chat bar enabled. I am uh, running things by myself, so I'll try to observe uh, chat when I see that, but uh, you can uh, save those questions in chat and we'll try to address those at the end of the workshop. So uh, just first, a little bit about myself and very little. <laughs> uh, I'm Jamie Jess. 
Justice. I'm Director of Education and Global Innovation for Eon Reality, uh, where I support the customer success strategies and leadership in uh, Eon Reality. Uh, prior to joining Eon, I served in the Kentucky Community Technical College System as a system director uh, in everything from workforce development, visualized learning, innovation, and lastly, I worked in the area of professional development and innovation. I also have a background in secondary education where I started out as a shop teacher and transitioned to technology education teacher. I worked in the Kentucky Department of Education supporting career and technical education programs for five years from 1995 to 2000, at which time I joined uh, the Kentucky Community and Technical College System. I retired from there in 2017 and joined EON in that year and have been working there until now. So enough about me. Uh, so to begin with, let's think about the process or what is systems thinking or system thinking, whichever term you prefer to use, as a program alignment methodology. I'm wanting to focus very simply and very practically on ways to look at what you may have in your curriculum or your program, your training program or education program, whatever level that you're at, to think about how this could best find the, a proper fit for XR to enhance the teaching and learning process. And the first step is to think about an analysis and review process. And that's really why we want to do this to start with. And I figured that most of you have already been answering that question as you looked at your program, your curriculum, your challenges that you may have. Uh, you know, prior to 2020, we, we may not have been teaching online. Suddenly with the pandemic, uh, online became the way to go. And it opened up a whole new door of changes uh, that we had to address and work with. So one piece of that system is the analysis and review piece. The other part that you have to consider or the other facet that you need to consider is, is where you are today and where you would like to be in the future. You know, education is not a destination and there's no one tool that fixes and solves every problem. So you have to identify where you are and where you would like to be and where you strive to be for future or your future state for students to be successful and for you to have success with the training programs that you offer. Another part of the system on, on the higher level side of things is goal setting. You know, what types of things do you really want to achieve? Where do you want students to be? Where do you want your programs to be? How do you want to interface and use this? Once you set those goals, you define where you are and where you want to be, you start thinking of innovative strategies and guiding questions. You know, wouldn't it be great if AVR or XR could be used to dot, dot, dot? What are those dots that fit your location or your best, best uh, or your institution in the best way? Uh, you know, so creative ideas, creative strategies to look at how you could use XR to enhance student learning is, is a major part of this process. So once you've decided to integrate and place XR into your curriculum, the next thing to do is how do you keep making it better? You know, the first time out of the gate with any new technology may have some challenges. Uh, perhaps you didn't have the buy-in that you wanted, or perhaps you had other challenges with, with getting things together. So how can you make it better? Once you build the first one, uh, then, then how do you make the next one better and more engaging and, and to work to that process? And that really will lead us into where I want to go with this, this whole discussion of systems thinking, in that it's a way that, that we can, can have a feedback loop or continuous improvement loop that can help us better plan plan our overall program or even at the granular level of plan a better lesson. And so I want to share with you a, a framework for that and some tools that will be available to you that you can use to help plan this out. Uh, and then lastly, the other piece of all this coming together, the overall global system, if you will, is to have a good segment of professional development. Uh, many of you, if you're already users of the platform, may have already been through our educator training program. Uh, which we've enabled you to, to learn how to create and build inside the platform or lead admin training or other workshops or deep dives that show you what the possibilities of the platform are. You know, professional development is something that can be ongoing. It's not just the technical aspects of how to use the platform, but it's also those aspects of how to make this fit into your teaching and learning process, wherever that may be. So that's kind of a quick snapshot of you know what the program alignment piece is on a higher level. And I have some tools that we'll share with you. I do plan to make available a resource that you can use that's based on tonight's presentation. And we'll provide access to you that through a link. You can email me uh, for it, or we'll put it into the resource section of the platform at, at a later date as soon as things are finished up with that. All right, so let's move along and let's talk about this technological system. 
this is something that has been around for a long time. Many of you may recognize it, that it's been part of the manufacturing industry for a long time. I used this methodology in teaching secondary technology education to students many, many years ago in the 1990s. And the whole design of the process is that it gives you a way to structure and organize content and your thinking primarily to better engage with students in this process. So we're taking something that's made for something totally unrelated to education and we're putting it into an educational model. So the five parts of a technological system are the goals, the inputs, the processes, the outputs, and the feedback. And all those come together to be used in a variety of different ways in, in planning your curriculum and planning your program. So first of all, let's take a look at goals. And as I mentioned in the earlier slide, you know, you want to think about where you strive to be, that place where you would like your students to wind up. We know that that education, again, is, is a journey, not a destination. And there are multiple ways that you have to engage with students with the different learning styles, different experiences, uh, different challenges, whatever they may be, to, to get them to a, a higher learning level or a better place. And so in this area, you start defining those challenges. What are those things that you really want to accomplish? Uh, and, and an example with this would be that as we move to online, what happened to programs that were taught primarily lab based? Uh, I use an example of welding and uh, you know, for example, you can no longer bring students to a lab at the, at the college or the school. How could you teach about different types of welding guns, machines, devices, materials that suddenly became a new challenge for you? And so you had to start thinking differently about how to teach, how to engage and how to prepare students. So in the goals phase, you start thinking at, at a high level here in this application. And again, I will come to some examples, practical examples at the end that, you know, where do you really want your program to be? Maybe at this level, you're thinking bigger picture where you ask that question. Wouldn't it be great if XR could be used to do something? Wouldn't it be great if XR could be used to help students in lab based programs access content online? Wouldn't it be great if you could use XR to uh, engage students in an interactive multi user session around an object? such as a 3D uh, model of, of an engine or some other device. Uh, wouldn't it be great if we could use XR to help students learn faster or to help students uh, be engaged in the learning process or to take ownership of designing their own lesson? So the goals portion, portion is what will drive the whole front end of the system. So ultimately, we're going to use this system to attain the goals that we've laid out on the front side as we did our planning. So after you've identified your goals, the next step, as you recall, were inputs. And the inputs are those resources that are available. What do you have now as you start? Uh, and as you look at the platform itself, it does provide you with the structure to, to import content of all types, whether it's a 3D asset, whether it's a CAD model or a 360 image. Uh, it gives you a platform and structure that allows you to engage students through a variety of formats, whether it's a head mount display, whether it's through their phone, whether it's an augmented reality application or just the interactivity of a 3D application. And it also provides you with that structure to manage that student learning to see what happens. So that's one resource that you have. The other resource that you have and that you have to plan on using are your programs and your curriculum. You know, which programs are the best fit for using XR inside of, you, of, your, of your college or your institution? What curriculum? What curriculum do you have? What skill standards are required to meet? Uh, what learning objectives are you having challenges with? What are the student learning gaps? What are ways that we can use you know, XR to make it better? And then you have to have your faculty, those who've been trained to use the platform, those who have uh, innovative ideas for, for teaching and learning and for, for how to, to really engage students in different ways. Who are your champions? that can be the first developers of content. So ultimately our guiding question here on the inputs is what is the best XR integration fit? What are, where are those ideal places where we could use XR to better enhance the teaching and learning process? What are ways that we could use XR to engage students differently? So you've identified your goals, you've put together your inputs, you have the structure, you have the resources available. And, and in a comparison to just being a manufacturing thing, those are your raw materials, those things that go into making a product. Once you have all that together, you begin making the product. And this is where the processes take place and come into play. So first of all, some integration strategies. How will you integrate XR into your curriculum? 
Well, one way to do that is through looking at your programs of study, uh, looking at a curriculum crosswalk to your course outcomes. So you can you can look at a course, say, in welding and what in welding would be ideal to be covered in XR. And maybe that is tools and materials. Maybe it's different types of welding machines. Maybe it's different nozzle types or some other you know technology. So that's one aspect. You can review your curriculum and you can look at things. This is also gives you an opportunity to maybe uh, think differently about what it is you actually teach. Why do we still teach this? It's no longer used. Maybe we could do something new that we can't afford, but we can teach that using XR. Our students do not have access to, to five different brands of welders, for example, or an aircraft engine or whatever you're teaching, whatever that topic may be. XR provides you with that ability to do that. So in this process, and you look at all your, your tools that you have, and then you think about how you want to use that, and you begin building those lessons. You can build those lessons in several ways. You can have your faculty build those lessons. You can have teachers uh, build their lessons. You can use students in a self-directed learning model as part of a challenge process for a student be, to be given a, a research project to do, for example. Uh, they research the topic. That's a first reinforcement. And then you do a mashup where they take their research and they actually build a lesson inside of the platform. And then that's a second mashup and reinforcement of learning. And then lastly, they do a presentation to their classmates inside of the app itself in a multi-user session or just by presenting that that lesson that they created inside the platform as one example so in the processing phase you start to think you know, we're going to use XR to increase engagement and in student success so now we're starting to think about we we have these resources we have these tools we've been planning we've started creating some lesson plans and tools to create that process and now we've we've engaged in creating those lessons that students will take and that they will use so from that point we move on to the outputs and outputs are very important from several viewpoints because you have to make some determinations of where things are are working and where they aren't so that you can adjust learning you know and it's like assessment you know assessment tells you that learning is occurring or not occurring and then you adjust your teaching accordingly based on the assessment that you pull back so now we start thinking about that future state uh, that we mentioned earlier so in your initial planning of the first slide where i talked about uh you know the the, the current and future state planning now we start to look at our, how are we getting students to that future state and so those are measures of student success. Those are could be numbers of users and applications that were created here in the platform. The quality of applications and user learning experiences is another piece of that. Uh, adoption and adaption of, of XR into programs. So you may start out with one or two programs that use XR, but then they find after some trial and error, perhaps, that they have quite a bit of success. Students are doing better. They're getting them to where they want them to be more rapidly. And ultimately, uh, you know, we can add more users and we begin growing. Or we find that we try to use this just in online only, but we think we could use it in face-to-face -face as well. So you can start changing the ways that you deploy and that you use uh, the XR within the content. So those outputs in the traditional sense of the technological system, there are two types. There were positive and there were negative. And those positive outputs would be that we suddenly see a big increase in student success or a big increase in student engagement. But maybe we see a decrease in in uh, numbers of applications that we're able to deliver, and we need to fix that so that we can create more applications and more lessons and put those out there for our students to use and benefit from. So the guiding question here on the outputs piece is where do you want to be with XR integration and goal attainment? You know, so this starts now feeding that feedback loop that that goes back to the first part of our process. And in the feedback loop, you start with guiding questions such as you know how do we improve? What worked well? What could work better? Who are our, our XR leaders? Who are those that really took hold of this and developed it and used it and then placed it into their curriculum and saw some success? So the measures of success that you can pull from this feedback loop includes your data, uh, any metrics you can pull from, numbers of logins, users who have used the application, uh, numbers of lessons that have been created, you know, any other documentation, those retrospective, uh, perhaps there's faculty meetings that, that you come together and talk about what you've learned and can pull back, you know, from out of the process. So those are some some key examples of, of an overview of the high level of the technological system for either planning a program or planning a course. And now let's take a look at this a little bit more in a practice and more practical level. 
And so I'm going to go back to the same looping again and talk about putting this in practice. So the first thing that has to happen to use this system, and again, I'm trying to be very practical and very simple, and hopefully I'm not being overly simple in our approach here. But basically in those five steps of defining your goals, your inputs, your processes, your outputs, and your feedback, you can organize and structure lessons or courses in a, in a really quick and easy way to just put some content down before you're, for yourself to start really thinking about how to try this out. So if you're struggling here on the front end with where I best use this, or what are the right lessons to create, or, or how do I know what to build, how do I know what I want to do, how do I design it, this can be a good jump start to help you get to that point of where you're becoming a power user more and more as you use the application. You know, you really want to think creatively in how you deploy and use XR because it has so much potential. And even though it's a simple application and it doesn't require a whole lot of skills to build, the, the door is wide open for creative uses and how it can be used to change students' lives and change the learning process. So to put this into practice, we want to define your learning goals first. You want to define the required inputs, those things that you need to, to cover. That's really where it fits, the topics that you want to cover. Define the expected processes that, that you want to do. Are you going to have students build content, faculty develop, uh, or, or a blend of each, and other resources where you pull things together. Uh, then you define the expected outcomes, affecting the measures, and then ultimately you create your feedback loop that will come back and feed the entire process. So goal setting strategies, where do you strive to be, as I mentioned earlier, what is your future state as a result of integrating XR? Where, where do you want to be after you have integrated XR into your curriculum? And that was defined in the earlier bigger process. Next, we look at our inputs, and as I shared with you earlier, you know, the, our learning objectives, what learning elements do you want to create and integrate? Uh, what are your high-level XR applications? What digital assets do you have available to you? And, and think about digital assets for a moment. That is 360 image. Those are 360 images that you might capture. Those are 3ds Max CAD files. Those are images that you get from uh, from CAD applications and have converted. Those are assets that you can pull in from the marketplace. So we now have a, we live in a time period where you can access a large number of assets that can be used for teaching and learning. And then lesson planning, uh, how you plan and create lessons. And we have some resources available for you also that enables you to plan a lesson that matches directly with the tools inside of the platform. Uh, and so that's another piece of those inputs, the lessons that you want to teach and create. And then video links or recordings. And that's something else that that is, if if you have had experience now within the platform and have used annotations, you can uh, add to each one of those annotations perhaps a video recording that you record of yourself teaching a particular lesson or providing a specific demonstration of how to do something. And then lastly, what assessment strategies do you want to use both internal to the platform and external to the platform so that you can get some feedback? So again, I'm really driving home into this this level of the inputs, processes, out you know, inputs, processes, output, and and feedback. So now looking at the processes that you do, how do you implement this system? Is that it, you have lesson plan development, 3D lessons, 360 lessons, video recordings, the online research app creation, app sharing, all those things that are provided to, to you to use with students as you plan to to develop your lessons. So the process is the actual creation of the lesson that you want to teach prior to actually building it in the platform. It's then the act of building it in the platform. It's also the act of sharing the content with your students as you've completed each lesson in, in the process. Next, we come to our outputs to be identified. And so, as I mentioned earlier, there, there are different types of outputs that that happen when you deploy in a technological system. Uh, the deployment is one, so it's great that we can build it once and deploy it in many ways. So you create this lesson, you can play it in head mount display, in an AR mode, a VR mode, all those type things that you've observed. And those are positive outputs that now students have expectations for being engaged and excited with that. Negative outputs may be, how do we take it to scale? Uh, how do we get more users inside of the platform? Or how do we uh, engage students to have them actually be excited about jumping into it? Uh, we can look at measures of attainment that as a result of integrating XR into the curriculum, one of the outputs was that we had increased attainment in student retention. Uh, 
Uh, an assessment plan is an output. How do we want to assess the student's success beyond logins? Do we want to, to assess them in other ways? Numbers of applications that were created and then where you want to be in the future. So then from there, we go back to the final breakdown of feedback at this lower level. And so now we can look at things that you've created through this process. So you set your overall goal first for how you want to use XR in your institution. That's the high level version. And then I'm going to take the same model in a moment and I'm going to plug it into a, an applica or a, a spreadsheet or a worksheet, if you will, that shows how we could use this even to plan lessons, individual lessons on the fly uh, as a quick way to do that. So now feedback things that you get back, you can look at app quality, you know, the, the types of applications that you created. Were they really good? Did they really uh, provide what you wanted uh, students to know and to be able to do? Uh, were they engaging? Were they entertaining? Were they accurate? Uh, are they usable? Uh, numbers of completions, numbers of lessons created, all those type things provide information for you to use inside of this system so that you can go back and start over again. So if you look at this feedback and you see that you have app quality that you really like and you go back to your goal is how can we help engage students in a better way? So what? how did this app better engage students? How do we make more of those? And so then you start putting it back through what resources do we have to make better apps? Who's going to build them and, and start the process over? So it's a continuous loop, continuous improvement type system. Uh, so now moving along, this is just kind of a, a quick chart and it's probably not a very good slide, but but one of the ways you could just basically scratch this out and, and work out the process. You start with where you strive to be, what you have available, what strategies you want to use, what your desired outcomes are, and your data and evaluation. Now that's the integration level. That's at a high level. Now I want to take a look at this at a little bit lower level. So I've, we have a template that I've put together that can allow you to use this same process. And so let's take a look at what one of those may look like. And let's begin first with an example of integrating XR into any program, X program. So perhaps the goal of, of this particular system is to increase student engagement in online courses. So how could we use this system to do this? What are the inputs that are going to be required to attain that goal? Well, we're going to need faculty. We're going to need content. We may need our learning management system. We may need digital assets. We'll need curriculum goals. And there are probably some other things that you can identify that you want to put together first as you start working to attain that goal using XR, goal, using XR as your solution. Then, once you've identified that, what are the processes that are going to happen that are going to help us increase student engagement? Well, lesson identification. What lessons do we need to create that would be of real interest to students? Uh, course crosswalks. You know, where does this fit within this welding program or other courses that may exist? And I'll show you some examples of those in just a moment as well to make this a little bit more practical. Uh, XR faculty development. Are our faculty ready to engage students using XR as a tool? So what? How do we train them? How do we how do we put them into developing lessons? And so XR faculty uh, develop, developed lessons by mean faculty, faculty developed XR lessons. I'm sorry, I stammered there a little bit. All right, student created lessons as part of a self-directed learning process. Uh, use of a tool called Design Briefs. That's that research, build, and engage, present uh, model that I shared with you earlier. And then how does this fit in all the other modalities of instruction? So you can use uh, XR in a flipped classroom, in an active learning model, or in deep learning, or any other uh, modality that you may be familiar with or that you currently use in your practice. So now we've done our procedures or our processes for attaining this goal. So what are the outputs that we want as we work towards increasing student engagement? So X numbers of AR lessons, XR lessons are created, X, XR multi-user lessons or meetings are created, uh, the number of expanded content uh, coverage that's, you know, multiple examples of equipment, for example, uh, what are the types of things that we can use or that we can teach and new visual approaches. And so we look at those outputs that came through the processes that we had, you know, 20 lessons created that were really good and we believe that those are going to increase student engagement. We had uh, an, a large number of multi-user sessions that we did with actual students and classes and we had feedback maybe out of a survey from those students that said, we really learned so much more when we had to take over and present on the topic that we created. And just different ways to provide them access. Suddenly, students are saying that 
I, because of XR, I was able to learn about five different types of welding machines that we do not have in our program. I was able to see what those look like and, and virtually use those and be part of that. And then lastly, that output then begins informing the feedback loop. And so looking at that number of lessons, it goes back up. How, how well did we do? in increasing the student engagement in an online course. So that's a very high level example of how you could use this simple process and chart. Let's take a look at, at, at a more granular level. And since I've been talking welding all night, let's take a look at, at this example of, of welding guns in a general um, a metal a welding class, GMAW class, and so arc welding class. Uh, so in this case, the goal of this instructor was that they wanted to increase and expand student awareness and knowledge about multiple types and parts of MIG welding guns. Maybe that's that's one goal. So now that the instructor has made that decision, you think about what are the inputs that I need? Well, I need my lesson plan on MIG guns, all the things that I want to teach. Uh, and I'm going to do some research as an instructor. This is me, the instructor, now using this, this tool. Uh, I need to do some research and think what guns that I want to cover as a topic. Uh, maybe I want to think about what video I would really like to do, record myself teaching uh, how to take apart these four different welding guns and, and have that embedded inside of this lesson. And then I look at my task list and I think of those things that I want students to know and be able to do as a result of completing this lesson. So I've, I've identified my goal of getting student awareness of multiple guns and parts, and I know what my inputs are. So now, as the instructor, I'm in the process of, of delivering or creating that. It can be either version. So in this case, I'm going to create an XR lesson on each brand or type of MIG welding gun that I want to cover. Uh, I can be the instructor, create, develop a, a, the lecture videos I mentioned before, the actual pro act of doing, create the student design briefs for self-directed lessons, and then ultimately go to those outputs that, that as I'm ready to share this with students, those outputs are the things that I'm going to give to students, are X number of training lessons that I created, a number of lessons that, of student lessons that maybe I engaged them to create, and that kind of is an overlap of the process, and then, you know, how I want to assess that student feedback, and then maybe I can do assessment embedded in the app, or maybe I can do a wraparound assessment that goes along with the lesson in the process. And then ultimately, I look at that after I've ran this for a couple of times. Maybe I have three sections of, of uh, welding, and I've run this with two classes, one class I didn't, and I see some feedback that those students who, who were exposed to XR learning had a better uh, learner experience. They, they knew about more types of, of welding guns than the students who did not uh, get the XR experience. Uh, those students that uh, used it were more engaged and excited in the lessons that they created, and that that sharing uh, help for a lot of peer-to-peer -peer learning and collegial learning. Uh, so there's lots of things that I can pull from that as feedback, and then I can take it back and plan to the next thing that, well, maybe the next goal I want to do are, are different types of metals. And how can I use XR and put it in the same process? So this little chart is just kind of a quick way to, to just you know, in scratch writing or whatever, to write down a process to, to quickly come up with ideas and ways that you can place this into your curriculum and, and help students uh, by using XR. So without showing examples of, of the platform itself, this is more or less been a focus on using a, a systems model of goals, inputs, processes, outputs, and feedback to be a continuous loop for planning lessons or planning at a higher level for you for how you may drop this into your curriculum. So one of the things that I'll, I want to share with you, and these will be available through the resources uh, page at, at, at EON, reality.com or out of the platform itself is where you can access the resources, uh, are application lesson planning templates, and I'll show you what those look like in just a moment, design brief templates, curriculum crosswalk tools, this framework planning template that I've, I've just shared with you, and I've, I've put that into a document, and a different thinking module that can also be included at, at some point in the future. So at that point, I wanted to stop sharing the slide presentation for just a second and show you a couple of examples. And so I want to share my screen now instead of inside of the platform. And I want to first of all talk about an example of a crosswalk. Uh, if uh, you have been involved in some presentations I've done in the past when I talk about welding, when I look at a crosswalk, I look at a, at a program, all this content on this side are things that you may already have as an instructor. 
you know, the, the, the type of program that it is. In this case, manufacturing is the program area uh, or career pathway. Welding technology, equipment maintenance may be some topics or actually the course titles themselves might be shielded metal arc welding, for example, is the one that I think I chose for this particular lesson. And then you look at what national skill standards that you need to take and then your learner outcomes that you've identified. But then in the other part of the system that we talked about before, and that's this half over here, we start looking looking at those topics that can be best met using uh, XR. So for example, uh, we can take a look at this part of this course here. So in, in that inputs or that goals piece, uh, equipment and filler materials is a topic I want to cover. And I can see here that I have welding guns as a topic. And then I can start breaking that down to the types of lessons that I want to create and how I want to use that. So this crosswalk can then be plugged into that system to, uh, to identify a goal. So now the goal may come out in this case that when I did on guns, for example. So all of these could be a sheet and plug each one of those into that system as a quick planning tool. So that's just one example of something that, that I wanted to share. Another thing that I wanted to share with you, and I've also updated this crosswalk uh, as a tool, as a resource for, for you to use, uh, and that uh, we can be zoom this up just a little bit more. And so now those same topics here on the left, but you can look at things like gap analysis, those high level topics, potential XR lessons, and then the format that you want to use for delivery. So this will be available also on the resources page for you to use as well. Now, as far as your lesson planning piece, we've put together a XR application planning template. And this really lines up with what the outcome is that, that you're planning or the goal. And that is what should someone know and be able to do after completing an application that you create. So you've laid it out in the system, those big things that you want to cover. And now we have a lesson plan template that you can kind of pre-plan and be thoughtful in the design of lessons that you want to create. And this tool just provides you with, with a, a way to organize those thoughts that you can create and adapt this in your own way, however you want to use it. But it's linked very closely to the platform itself so that you can build inside of the desktop or from your phone. But you've kind of pre-planned it first. And, and you have a way to document and plan those bigger lessons and those bigger topics as, as you work through. So that's one tool. And then the last tool I want to share with you quickly here is a, an instructor's guide for self-directed learning using design briefs. So we also have this resource available that helps you put together lessons where you have students research, do application creation and presentation as three means of reinforcement of, of the teaching and learning process or their learning experience really uh, for using XR in the, in the process. And so then again, this tool provides you with a number of, of steps and roles and things that you can do to effectively engage students in creating lessons to, to cover topics that you've identified in your earlier system model. So with that, uh, I will stop sharing screen there and uh, we'll go back to this presentation and we'll uh, leave some information here on the end. And if you have questions that you would like to share with me, you can place those in the chat window and I can address those and uh, we can take it from there and we'll make this kind of a, a short experience. But I uh, think it's worthwhile for us just to look at one way that you can plan and put lessons inside of uh, your your systems or your curriculum uh, using a systems model based on that, that first identifying your goal, identifying what resources you have as inputs, the process of creating those lessons and how you want to get to where you want to be and doing the outputs at last and then always having a feedback loop that improves that discussion. So I will take any questions that you have. Uh, and the first question I have, is the guide available in Spanish? Not at this moment, but we will see what we can do about that. Other questions? Does it make sense? If we if we think about you know looking at things that one thing affects the other essentially and and really to me the biggest challenge of XR integration is just finding the place where it makes the most sense to not only the students but to the faculty to the trainer so that that you can engage students in you know different ways and and all those switches of modalities go to different learning styles and it helps students become more successful in their learning and 
if we can use XR to do that, and I think we have the platform that really enables you to do that, uh, that's where this all comes together. So there's multiple ways that we can approach this. This is just one example. And so with that, I think uh, we'll see if we have any other questions. Um, I can share this document with you by Gmail. So what I will ask you to do, and I'll be happy to do that, and we'll return it as soon as possible to you, is if you can email me at jamie.justice at eonreality.com. I will share a copy of it with you, and I will work with our marketing team to also have it placed in resources. Just as soon as I finish a couple more details, there's there's two sections that I want to add to it uh, for you. And what I will do uh, while we're, we're there, I will stop the presentation for just a moment, and I will show you the draft of, of what I'm working on as far as the systems thinking model. And we'll go here, and let me see, I need to come back. Share my screen once again. So in this document, uh, basically, I want to, to touch on the key things that we did again tonight, which are those goals, inputs, process, outputs, feedback, the technological system itself, provide you with a quick overview of the things that were covered in the presentation, and then give you these templates. So we have an example that you can work from of two ideas that I had. And then uh, ultimately, we'll, we'll just have this tool that you can print out, mark up, use however you want to use it as, as a resource in uh, building your own lessons and making your own uh, system technological system for deployment of XR in the future. All right, the link to the instructor sessions, uh, it depends on your location as far as, as you're being first trained. Uh, if, if you are with one of our partners, you can check with your lead admin or someone at your institution, and they can identify a training session that's, that's coming to you, or perhaps you can join a session with someone else. Uh, we do have uh, ongoing training sessions with our partners at, at Startup, and so hopefully uh, if you haven't been able to get into those, do, we can get you into another one soon. Uh, look for these ongoing workshops. This, is, again, is the first one. Uh, there will be one each month, and uh, those will be advertised, so there's some other topics that you can start with. Uh, and hopefully that, that's enough to, helpful enough to get you started on, on the process. Any other questions? All right, so once again, I'll put my information up. Uh, you can, of course, go to uh, eonreality.com, and don't forget that you can go to help and resources inside of the platform, and that will take you directly to uh, lots of uh, information that we've provided for you. Also, if you're having some challenges, you can do support at eonreality.com if you're having some technical uh, problems, or you can also look inside of the platform itself on the help links to, to get support for the other content that, uh, that you may have some problems problems with or some challenges with. All right, so with that, I will stop for the night and say thank you very much for being here. Let um, me see if one more question that I may have missed. Um, Okay, uh, so there's some network issues about sharing. So just if uh, you can email me at jamie.justice.eonreality.com, I will be glad to share information with you. Uh, please don't, don't hesitate to reach out. And with that, I will shut down our meeting for the night and say thank you very much for being here. Thank you all.